All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about epipolar geometry, which is used in stereo vision. So we will start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we will see how we could get two stereo images and draw the corresponding epipolar lines like we see here on the bottom in these two images. So what is epipolar geometry? So epipolar geometry describes the geometric relationship between stereo images. Okay, so here on the right is a picture and you can see that we have modeled a left camera and a right camera and these are the origins of the cameras. So what we define here is what's called the epipolar plane and that's formed by three points. So you'll have some world point here which we call X and the two camera centers and this green plane is what we call the epipolar plane. Okay, so that's the epipolar plane. And the epipolar lines, what that is, is a point in one image is a line in the other image. So what that means is you can see that this point here, x, if you project it to the left plane, it's a single point, but this point is actually a line viewing it from the right view. So it forms this line here in the red. And what epipoles are is intersection of image plane and line connecting camera centers. So this here we call the baseline, which is from OL to OR. So this, this line here is your baseline. And these points that intersect the um, image plane is called your epipoles. So here is one epipole and this is another one. So you can imagine your epipolar plane will change based off of what your world point is and you'll have a bunch of different epipole, epipoles depending on how your plane is oriented. Okay, so here's two cases that you'll probably deal with. You will have uh, epipolar lines at infinity or in other words, uh, the epipole is at infinity. So that means the camera is parallel. So you could have two cameras side by side facing the same direction. And here the epipolar lines intersect at epipole. So here you might have an instance where the image plane, where the epipoles show up in the image plane, or you could have um, your image plane outside so that the epipole is not inside the image plane. So those are some different variations. And this happens when your camera is not parallel. So if you have a top view, you may have cameras that's like pointing in some direction, okay? So why do we need epipolar geometry? You may use it for things like 3D reconstruction, also feature matching between stereo images. Sometimes we will use the epipolar lines to determine the stereo match between um, the two images. So it simplifies some of the search. So how does epipolar geometry work? Um, the way it works it goes back to some geometry and there's some term that we'll cover which is called the essential matrix. So what this describes is the relationship between the two cameras. So the two cameras will have some translation and some rotation if they have a different coordinate frame. So what this is is the relationship. So what we have here is T cross Rx. So what that does is it forms a plane and that is the normal to the plane. And if we take a vector, say X prime, so if we're looking at the X axis of this corner frame, if we take that, it's gonna be X prime is perpendicular to the plane. So X prime dot T cross Rx is zero. So that's, that's like a relationship you can say then that's, that's what we get, okay? So here, based off of that relationship, we call E is our essential matrix, and we could say that this quanti quantity here holds true based off of the geometry. Then we have another term, which we call the fundamental matrix. So the fundamental matrix is the F matrix, and this is very similar to the previous equation. The only thing we're adding here now is the um, eccentrics, which is captured with a K matrix. So here we have some points that's been projected based off of the intrinsics. 
And if we factor that into the equation, we get a new one, um, which relates the points in the left and right image. So from that, you get what's called the fundamental matrix. Okay, so that's the general idea. There's some details I'm glossing over, but the main idea you want to know is that there is two key equations which will hold true, and this can be used to find your epipolar lines or epipoles. Okay, so let's jump right into the coding. Okay, so here's our code that I generated. So we're gonna first take a look at the pictures we're dealing with. So inside our demo view pics, we're gonna call our epipolar geometry. So here we have created a constructor, which we um, will get our roots and then get the paths of our left and right images, which we're using a motorcycle. And then we will read in the image and we will plot the image, okay? And we're gonna plot it in grayscale. So if I go ahead and run this, we will see the images that we're dealing with. Okay, so, okay, so you can see our images have been generated here. So you can see that this is a left and a right version. So you can see if you look at this amount of space here, this has been slightly shifted. So you know the camera is two different views, right? Okay, so next part is we're gonna run, run the other part of our function. So uh, we're gonna do our demo draw lines is the next function we're running. So inside demo draw lines, we're not gonna show the picture again, but what we're gonna do is draw the serial um, epi lines. So first off, what we wanna do is run the shift or sift uh, create, so this will create a sift object for us. And then I have a video on that, you could go check it out. Um, so here we do sift detect and compute, so we pass in our left image, and we're gonna get the KP and um, the descriptor, key points and descriptors for the two. And then from there, we will set up our index parameters here for, and then we have a search parameter. So this will do our searching, which we will do to do our feature matching, okay? So um, once we do the feature matching, we're gonna call the KNN match to find our match. So we will find the best matches off of that. And then we're gonna do the, the ratio test to find a better match for our um, SIF features. And then from there, once, if, it, if this um, quantity holds, we're gonna append it to our list of points in the right and left. Okay, so to calculate the fundamental matrix, we have to modify it to int 32. So we're gonna cast it. And then the find fundamental matrix here is the new function we're using. So we pass in the points left and points right. And these are n by one by two NumPy arrays. And then we have a method here that we could pass in. So we're gonna use the fm um, l meds it's the LMS algorithm. Uh, I won't go into details about that, but there's a couple of options you can choose to play around with. There's a seven point, eight point, and there's a ransack. Okay, so ransack is used by default. And we're going to go ahead and um, leave some of the other parameters by default. So you can see here, there's a ransack, reproject threshold, a confidence, and a max iteration. So. Typically, if it's bad, you could play around with the max iteration. Um, so you could see if it's not converging, that's like a parameter you could play with if you need more iterations for some reason. Okay, but most of the time, if you're not getting results, it could mean that there's a singularity issue or so you may not have enough points. Okay, so next up, we're gonna extract the points. So we're gonna see if the mask is zero and get those points for the left and right. And then we we have too many epi, epipolar lines. So we're gonna actually create a step which will get every other 10 lines instead. And then from here, we're gonna draw the line. So we have our um, compute corresponding epi lines. So this function, what it does is it computes the epi lines for points in one image to the other image. So um, this function right here, what it does is we will pass in our points, which is gonna be uh, n by one or one by n numpy array. And then which image is gonna be one for first and two for the second. And then we're gonna pass in our fundamental matrix, which is a three by three. 
okay, which was computed here. So the output of that was a three by three and then the mask was an n by one. So from here we have, um, we're gonna call our draw lines function. So our draw lines is a static function here. So what this does, it takes a left, right, and then the lines and then the points in the left and right. And we're gonna find the shape to uh, find the size of it and then get our left and right image in grayscale. And then for each one, we're gonna actually draw the lines on there. So we have colors, that's random. And then we're gonna map our positions, X and Y as integers. And then here we call the line and circle function to draw it directly on the image. Okay, so from there, we do the same thing. We um, call the compute corresponding epi lines for the other image, and then we draw the lines again, and then we plot it. So if I go ahead and run this, we'll see the results. So the lines, you can see the lines here is gonna be an n by three, but you can see that when we plot it, you can see that the lines should um, match up to the different sections. So if I zoom in here, um, you can see that there's different points that we're getting. So I could zoom in closer here and you can see that um, there's matching points in the right and left image. Okay, so that's how we could work with the stereo image. And I'm gonna have a video on depth maps later on, so go check that out and subscribe to learn more computer vision.